Welcome into this week's edition of AWA Unleashed. We are the self-proclaimed preeminent number one podcast dedicated to telling the stories and reliving the memories of the American Wrestling Association. My name is Chris Tubbs, sans the hat, the messy hair. It's a new gimmick. Do you like it? I hope it gets over. Two guys that do have gimmicks that, uh, I mean, you would say that they're over. I don't know if they're over. I don't even know. I'm using terms like somebody that doesn't know what they're talking about. So you guys take it from here. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Joe. Good Mr. morning. I've been called worse than a gimmick, I guess, in my day. So that's not a horrible thing, I suppose. Everything in life is a gimmick, Joe. Yeah, damn right. You know, damn that's right. what that's what I've that's what I've learned over the last couple of years. Like everything in life is a gimmick. I've said it on the air on CCO. I I just like randomly throw out the word gimmick and then I'm like, man, I just I just said gimmick and everybody out there is like, huh? It has been, it has become a part of my everyday vernacular. It's like, Hey, yeah. go, go get me that gimmick. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. The, the, you know, and somebody that uh, I haven't worked with before, they'll look at me like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, first, first time I heard it out of context was Al Darusha. And I, I told you guys this, when we were at the showboat, he asked the waitress, I believe in the coffee shop, <laughs> To hand him the spaghetti sauce gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> Open up a whole new vista. Oh my god. Well, we've got some we've got somebody who is not a gimmick. He uh, he doesn't run a gimmick. It's not about the gimmick. This is a fun show, guys, because we are just a couple weeks away from I, I went there the first time in my life last year and I had an absolute blast. And I am so much looking forward to it more now this year because I know what to expect. And that is the Dan Gable Luthes Museum in Waterloo. My, my wife makes fun of the way that I say Waterloo. Waterloo! That's how I say it. She makes fun of the way that I say Waterloo. She's like, you say Waterloo. I'm like, I know where it's at. But it's fun. It's enjoyable. And I'm going to say it how I want to say it. But uh, we have got the president and the uh, owner of Impact Professional Wrestling, Troy Peterson, that's with us. And Troy, man, this is this is great. First of all, the gimmick that the, you got behind you, I love it. That's a great gimmick. Oh. Yes. I got it. <laughs> there. Hey, Troy, welcome. Hello. Yes, I like, I, you know, I too use gimmick. I don't overuse a lot of wrestling vernacular, but gimmick is in my daily daily usage. As it should be. You got it. Well, this this is a fun one here, guys, because I I wanted to get Troy on number one because I think there's a lot of really cool things that he can tell us about with the uh, Dan Gable Luthes Museum. But just I I want to tell people really how cool of an event that if you've not heard about it and you're interested in doing something, you're a fan of the old school wrestling, not even professional, but they've got the amateur there. I mean, it takes you through the whole history uh, of wrestling. And if you're a fan, this is one of the places you definitely want to go. So I, I want to start out, Troy. First of all, thanks for taking the time here because I think this is going to be really fun for a lot of people. And maybe we can kind of tell them what they would be missing if they don't go out there. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. This is an honor. This is a lot of fun. And, you know, this time of year, it's, it is kind of, for me, all roads lead to that July 20th uh, in Waterloo to the Hall of Fame weekend. And it is, it's a kind of a tough story to tell because, you know, you have like CAC out in Vegas and it's like, hey, that's a great, it's, you know, hey, you're going to Vegas. So we're trying to get people to Waterloo. And so sometimes uh, it's a little more difficult, but we promise once they get there, like they'll have a similar experience that you had. It's a there's not a lot going on in Waterloo, which is a great thing for a wrestling convention. There's no distraction. So it's not uncommon to, you know, go down to the breakfast nook and there's, you know, Joe Malenko or, you know, yeah. uh, Mick Karch or, uh, you know, uh, Jerry Briscoe wandering. And, you know, and everybody's kind of, I don't know, there's a lot of give back to the weekend when it comes to a lot of the wrestlers. It's not just another pay date a lot of them are yeah. donating their time and, and therefore i think they they appreciate the people that have spent their time to come and support like you know, so i feel like the the attendee and the legend interactions are are very organic and very you know it's, it's a lot of fun like you come there to see 
JBL or Haku, but then I think you'll end up finding yourself talking to Rick McCord or Thunderbolt Patterson or one of these characters that can, you know, really make the weekend. And so, or John Nord, that crazy guy, somebody like that. So, well, <laughs> but no, it was like, a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So what about the, the history of the museum? Well, why, why Waterloo? First of all, like why are we talking about the location in, in Waterloo? Um, so really, in 1998, a quick one-minute history, a guy, a gentleman named Mike Chapman started this museum, and he, and he had Luthez and a, and a fellow named Bill Tragos, whose grandfather, George Tragos, was a wrestler from Greece. And so they financed this museum and named it the George Tragos Luthez Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame. And Mike Chapman ran that for many years in Newton, Iowa, and then just – the National Wrestling Hall of Fame out of Stillwater, they came in and, and kind of helped financially and kind of took it over. And then they had an opportunity to move to Waterloo, where Dan Gable's from. And the city of Waterloo was going to kind of combine the Dan Gable Museum, create a Dan Gable Museum, and then house the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame inside of it. So that's kind of, and then, you know, they promised a nice facility and, and delivered on that and, and really made it possible and, and tenable to keep going and moving forward. So that's kind of why Waterloo, Dan Gable kind of brought it to Waterloo. And then mm -hmm. um, Kyle Klingman took over as museum director in 2009. And then that's kind of when I got back involved in 2010. And then um, I've kind of been helping with the weekend since then. And then Kyle left in 2019 and was replaced by former Warbler wrestling coach, uh, Jim Miller and Becca Roper's on staff there. And so now, now it's a whole new staff these last few years, but, um, they've done a complete renovation four years ago. So it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a classy place to house pro wrestling. And that's kind of what I love about it. And it's separated into the two wings. Like, wh why the two wings, Joe or uh, Troy? You know, I think I think the pro wrestling was kind of like, hey, Mike Chapman. That was his whole thing was the professional wrestling, and then he gets into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, and their whole thing is amateur wrestling. So they kind of, and Dan Gable obviously is all amateur wrestling. So they they kind of did a Kyle Klingman kind of facilitated this. Hey, let's combine these worlds and. Um, you know, they, they can coexist and, and they have coexisted. And, and that's kind of why the criteria for going into the, you know, the hall of fame in Waterloo requires an amateur background and, you know, and that's, or an amateur athletic background. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of like how it, how it's, uh, why it's there. And then, you know, this weekend has really kept it there. I mean, this weekend acts as a big fundraiser for the museum and they've kind of saw the value and we've kind of created a value on the backs of all the people that support us each year. So, I mean, it really is a pretty big part of the having pro wrestling there is this weekend that acts as a, as a fundraiser. So let's see. Oh man, that was, uh, I don't know if you can see that. John, was, John, John, yeah, that was John Nord being nice to somebody. Uh, that, that <laughs> a friend of mine last year said, Hey, is John Nord? He just chased me off the elevator with a sword. He goes, I got in the elevator. <laughs> he goes, I got in the elevator. And he goes, This elevator is built for one barbarian. And he goes, I kind of thought he was kidding, but then he pulled his sword up because I did get out of the elevator. <laughs> he was like, well, that was John. That was John on a good day. He was in a very good mood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he this, huh? Oh man, yeah. So that, he's a hell of a guy, Chris. Be, be, I know you got another question, but I, I just wanted to kind of piggyback what what Troy was saying. There, besides their athletic skill, a, a lot of the inductees into the Hall of Fame in Waterloo, outside of the ring. They have, you know, some community connection or they've done something charitable or, or you know, something along those lines. So it, it really transcends what they do as a professional wrestler. And I think that that is really great because it recognizes the real person away from the ring. Exactly right. And, you know, I, I, I'm thinking back to uh, Mick Foley, uh, you know, the year that Mick got inducted. And I'm hearing these stories about 
uh, him working on a suicide hotline and actually taking calls. I mean, it just blew me away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, it, that, I think that's what's neat. And I think it's neat for a lot of the people that get honored is, Hey, they've been honored for their professional wrestling career many times, but now like Mick said, um, you know, they get kind of, recognized for the works they've done the rest of their life too. You know, a lot of these guys have done so many of these amazing things, Booker T running, you know, these underprivileged youth camps down in Houston and, you know, uh, like this year's Bill DeMond has dedicated, you know, his life to kind of fighting drunk driving and increasing drunk driving strict laws and just, yeah, all these people you find out kind of, Hey, they've, it's not all, you know, we hear about the bad stuff, unfortunately. You know, bad news travels better than good news. And so you hear the bad stuff about pro wrestling, but I think that is a really what makes this weekend special for me is hey, it is kind of this positive. It's not talking about, you know, the the bad stuff. It's talking about the good stuff. The people mm -hmm. have come out on the other end and been able to give back to their communities, and, and I think that's what really makes it neat. I'm proud, yeah, that's kind of what I'm proud to be part of is that angle of it so a lot of the inductees you're right they're kind of chosen for being great pro wrestlers and great humans that's kind of a combo a combo an unwritten combo rule that's yeah that's that's it exactly i mean I, you know i'm thinking back to the beth phoenixes of the world and even you know renee goulet and his and his wife and all the things that they did outside of professional wrestling and i mean it's not all glitz and glamour you know, you, you turn off those lights above the ring and these are real people and they get involved in the community. And that's that's what I personally love about Waterloo. You know, you sit there and you, and you hear some of these induction speeches and they're just above and beyond. You really get choked up at hearing how much these guys and gals really deliver to the community. Yeah. Troy, so explain the difference between the wrestling hall of fame in waterloo and yep. oh let's say the wwe hall of fame i know a lot of people in the business sort of know the difference between the two i yep. won't get into it i mean i think they both deserve their their place and despite what you think of the wwe hall of fame and forget all of that tell us <laughs> tell from your mouth tell us the difference between the two I think one of the things is just the selection process. Like it's not, you know, I think, and I don't know what the WWE selection process is, but it's kind of long been murmured. It's a little bit of an audience of one, you know, somebody says, Hey, we like this person and they, you know, and so our selection process is always, it's pretty much been unchanged since 98 is every, there's a few, you know, dignitaries, but basically it's all former inductees like other hall of fames, they vote and they have a ballot and each year, you know, they, there's a nominee list. Anybody can nominate anybody. Um, if they don't get any votes in the first three years, then they're removed from the nomination list and then they can be renominated after two years. Otherwise, yeah, there's really no, it's just everybody votes. It's a very fair process. It's very, you know, open, transparent process and i think that's separates it and it also just i think it's it's it is an honor to people mm -hmm. i think the wwe is more of an yeah. event and, and that's there's nothing wrong with that either but there's more hey we're trying to sell tickets they're not gonna we could be the foremost qualified people in the world but we ain't drawn you know we're not we're not selling out an arena to hear me talk so they're not gonna induct mm -hmm. us um but yeah, it's it is different, and obviously, though the WWE is is still the you know obviously the biggest game in the world. So if they decided to do a a, a more you know brick and mortar type Hall of Fame, I think they would be the only game in town really quickly. I just don't think they're gonna go that direction. Yeah. But. You, you've touched a little bit about what the criteria is to get inducted into the Hall of Fame. Can you sort of give us a rundown of what those gimmick points are? Yeah, so there's different. So for there's and there's award winners. So then there's like a, a committee to select award winners. So each year we have inductees that go through the process that I just spoke of. And but then there's like the the Luthas Championship Award, which is kind of given each year 
to somebody that has through outside works brought positive attention into the world of professional wrestling. So that this year is Bill DeMott for going through, he's got his name, his daughter um, was killed in a drunk driving accident and years ago. And so he is, he goes and lobbies to these different state congresses and tries to, you know, getting started a foundation. So he's getting that, um, you know, there's the Frank Gotch award, which is basically given to, a badass, you know, kind of like, you know, it's kind of the, the, it's not the exact wording, I, but it's given. They, they could call it the Mick Karch Award. It, Mick Karch oh, Award, there oh, you go. Oh, they could. <laughs> yeah, there's only one word too many in there. It's the ass award. Oh, I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so new to me. I can't, I can't partake in, in, in uh, picking oh, up. Please, please don't. Keep it classy, Troy. <laughs> as yeah, a I do. Yeah, I, 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 I take us into the alley. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, you take your nipples places too that they don't belong. But go ahead, <laughs> go, go, go ahead, Troy. You were, uh, you know, you were so in the water. Such a yeah, yeah, <laughs> such a great point. Um, I, I love that the badass award because you know you you we see the Stan Hansons and the Baron von Raskies and the JBLs and the and the Hakus. There are some real genuine badasses there. Um, I, I just want to take a little aside because I've been to other wrestling conventions. And, and Chris, I think this kind of, and Joe goes to the point of what's the difference mm -hmm. in Waterloo. The, the wrestling fans, the attendees are not herded like cattle through an endless line of, you know, you know, get your money out. And you know he'll he'll smile and he'll pose for the the photo with you. Now keep it moving. Yeah. And, uh, you know we don't want anybody to uh, talk to these people. You know until they're sitting in the chair and and then you got about twenty seconds. Keep the line moving. Uh, in Waterloo, it's totally different. It is. And Chris, you know this. It's so yes. back. Uh, you can very, run into very, very casual. Well, when we first got there last year, Mick, I kid you not. Like this is what happened, Troy. We went to the hotel, we, you know, checked in, did all that, went down to the bar. Like the first person that we run into is Barbara Goodish. Yeah. Who's sitting yeah. next to JJ. Dill. So, I mean, we're just sitting there and in my mind, I'm like, I'm talking with Barbara Goodish. She gave me a hug and I'm like, you know, and then, yeah, you see that and you see Jim Ross sitting at the bar, just getting something to eat. And it's like, it is so casual and so non-intimidating because I feel like sometimes these events, they get intimidating for fans. Yeah. It, it, it's not intimidating at all. It's just very laid back. And I feel like it's, it's very inviting, Mick, I think is, is kind of the word. And I think that makes a big difference to wrestling fans because it's not just all about the money, picture, autograph, move on. It's like you can actually get into a conversation with people and you feel like you really get that true interaction. And I don't know that I felt that anywhere else. You know, it's it, there's a fan fest and then there's Waterloo. Yeah. And, and I think there's a huge difference, uh, Troy. And I, it's almost like the wrestlers themselves feel the difference, too. Uh, you know, now they're they're human beings. They're interacting with people at close range. It's an honor. It's a true honor to be at the Hall of Fame as opposed to just, you know, making an appearance and, you know, making some money. So, you know, in every aspect, the Hall of Fame in Waterloo is just so fan friendly. I need to pay you. What are you doing tomorrow? We need to pay you guys to be spokespeople. We just need to do this every day. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a shoot. Like I, I had no idea what to expect. And, and within the first five minutes, I just, I felt like I couldn't, I, I didn't want the weekend to end after my first five minutes, Troy. And that's was honestly like what it was like. That, I appreciate you saying all that. I mean, that is though what we're kind of aiming for. And since, yeah, there are so many, you know, mark out moments for me uh, I just and it kind of goes one by one after another like you said hey you see Barbara Goodish and you see Jim Ross and and I think that was created a little bit just because hey the wrestlers when they're not being treated like hey here's 
seven hundred dollars. You got to sit here for three hours and sign this, and they're fine doing that. But when it becomes a financial transaction that way, I think they treat everybody and all that like a financial transaction. Sure. Where this is more, hey, they're coming. A lot of these people are just coming to hang out. You know, just coming down to see their friends, and that's kind of you know, it's and that's what we really like building is that yeah. kind of community where, hey, we're not booking people per se. I mean, we are, but then there's a lot of people that just come because it's fun to be there. And that's kind of well, where I think that atmosphere gets created is it's from the wrestlers being, Hey, I'm here and I'm not being treated. I'm being treated nice. I see nobody's grabbing a bunch of money and, you know, trying to make a bunch of money off me this weekend. It's all kind of pretty altruistic. So I think a lot of the wrestlers pick up on that. Some don't, but then they don't come yeah. back. You know, like, yeah. And, and I'm, I, I'm, I met like a bunch of friends last year that I I've connected with and I continue, I've stayed in touch with and I'm looking forward to seeing them when I go back to, you know, whether it's Maddie yeah. or it's Chris or it's Sam, or I, I just, I've met so many different people out, outside of, you know, that are just fans that want to be down there. And it's, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm kind of rambling on, but what, what about you, Troy? Like, what are your specific, cause I know you've got your hands in a lot of different things in terms of what you do during that weekend. Kind of t- take me through what your responsibilities are. Um, it, it, they become, it, they become increased over the years and then as kind of directors fade out and then they're like, Hey, Troy, you like the pro wrestling stuff. Great. You and Chad Olson, a lifelong friend of mine, you kind of handle it. And then, you know, they, we have Jerry Briscoe on our on our uh, committee that kind of he he lends the credibility. He's the reason we have some autonomy is, you know, hey, they trust Jerry. They don't need to trust us then, you know, so um, the people in like Stillwater. So really, a lot of this starts in August and, you know, in August, we're trying to do grants and things like that for the weekend and try to start putting together the class and that kind of work semi year round on this and then now starting about the first of june then it's kind of we're you know printing all access passes and hanging posters and getting hotels and all that fun stuff so the, all the mundane stuff we kind of take care of so and then the museum's a big help kind of in that last month push so well, you, a, yeah you, Chris and I saw you in action, Troy, and I've seen it several years. And Chris actually mentioned to me last year, does the, you know, does Troy ever slow down? <laughs> you know, we, we, we tried to get a word with Troy where he was just here a minute ago, you know, and we see you, you know, like the, the Tasmanian devil running around all over the place. I, you know, it's testament to how hard you work, how hard everybody involved with the hall of fame works. It, it's, it's just an honor to be there. And, I, I just want you to know that. And I'm just going to take a little bit of an aside here because we're an AWA podcast, of course. So everybody say, well, what's the connection with Waterloo and the AWA? Well, first of all, uh, the AWA did run Iowa. Uh, I don't know how often they ran Waterloo, but they were in Davenport continuously. But when you look at that list of Hall of Fame guys in the inductees, the AWA, ladies and gentlemen, is well represented. You know, Vern and Nick and the Hennigs and the Bashans and Danny Hodge and the, the Bill Wattses of the world. You know, so the AWA has not been forgotten uh, by Waterloo. And, and we appreciate that as AWA fans. No, I, you know, I, I meant to wear my AWA shirt today, but I it was in the laundry. Because, but uh, no, and that's it, a lot of, yeah, I, that's certainly kind of what brought me into this. I mean, sir, the AWA just kind of, I, I hated the idea of that being forgotten. I hated, I mean, just, I, I just, you know, kind of part of my childhood. So then um, in 2010, when Kyle was like, Hey, I don't know if this pro wrestling weekend, it's been kind of a tough one. You know, we don't have people in place that really know about it. And Mike Chapman had left. And so, I kind of felt like the first couple of years when we did the weekend, it was, hey, if this fails, it will be the last one. So I think with that kind of fire, that was – and then I kind of grabbed all my friends and were like, AWA, you know, like, hey, we've got Baron, we got all these guys. We're trying mm-hmm. to kind of, you know, 
keeping the fold and, and, um, and it just barren really was a big push for us. And, and, uh, to kind of, I don't say, I don't say save it and sound like the patron saint of anything, but, but it was like, Hey, it was kind of, it didn't really fit into you asked how it fit. Well, it didn't really. And so we kind of tried to, everything we did kind of tried to make it fit and guys like Baron and, and Jerry with amateur backgrounds and, and just being extraordinary people. So then these, you know, the board of directors comes from Stillwater and they meet these guys and like, Oh, okay. This is not, this is legit. These are, these are, le- these are really great human beings and, and done amateur wrestling proud by going to pro wrestling. And so, yeah, it kind of, it's, it's, it's a, symbiotic relationship between the amateur and pro but i did also uh ramble there for a while so i don't know where no, we you, you you keep <laughs> rambling yeah you, you can have to listen to us you fit right in that's all we do on a weekly basis <laughs> yeah, Thank you, Troy. Well, whatever gimmick you want to do troy <laughs> the gimmick is yours the gimmick there's my rambling is. gimmick <laughs> you know, speaking speaking of gimmicks, is that Doey Joey's gimmick going to be uh, a, a part of this uh, event? Uh, they are, the- yes. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Chris and I are looking forward to uh, a return to Doey Joey's. That's the highlight of the weekend. Oh, wait. I know. I, I, I went there yesterday. I went and hung posters. <laughs> and then about 1130, I'm like, let's meet at Doey Joey's. Well, Five pizzas and three beers later, the posters kind of stopped getting hung. We kind of it's got to be five, three yeah. pizzas and five beers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. That's where I was going. Yay, Joe. <laughs> Troy, um, let, let's talk about the inductees that you've got coming in this year. Yeah, um, this is a great class, and we've kind of expanded because we expanded kind of on the award winners. Um, just because we don't want to, there's a big right now group of young men and women that have amateur wrestling background that are in WWE, but there's not a lot of guys that, you know, we've kind of honored a a lot of those people. So we're kind of running out of, you know, uh, good candidates. I shouldn't say good candidates. There's plenty of good candidates, but getting them here and all that. So we've added some awards, um, as part of the class. So this year we have the Frank Gotch award, which kind of, we said is kind of the, the badass award is going to Haku. Um, oh, imagine because, that. Yeah. Right. I mean, when you said his name, like, yeah, he's a good fit. Um, hmm. The inductee this year is Gary Albright, a posthumous inductee. Um, he was a big fan of Luthez and Luthez is a big fan of his towards the end of his life. And, uh, yeah, and he's you know, and he so he was, he's on the he's kind of on the, a lot of the voters were have been pushing for Gary Albright for a long time, so mm-hmm. it made a lot of people happy to get him there in, in our organization, but uh, or get him in. Uh, Tom Burke's getting the Jim Melby Award. Uh, this one is a little polarizing. Uh, Conrad Thompson is to uh, get the Gordon Soley Award. I know. Uh, that might, <laughs> it's, you know, and I talked to Conrad and he is fantastic. I, I, I haven't met him. I just talked to him on the phone. Yeah. He's so humble to be there. And so I think he's got this personality that's pretty uh, bombastic, but I really think when, yeah. when people meet him, he's, they're going to, they're going to enjoy. Uh, yeah. I've, I've talked to Conrad a, a couple of times and kind of, as Mick would note, a, a sidebar. I've talked to him, I've interviewed him, I've met him, and it, it, it's interesting because as, as this podcast goes along, I, I do want to give Conrad his credit because I feel like he was really the one that started this long-form idea when he started uh, something to wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. Like, yeah. that was the beginning of it. And then, you know, 83 weeks with Eric Bischoff and – um you know, when Jim Ross went from the um, from uh, the JR report to grilling JR, I feel like Conrad Thompson really opened up this this genre in this format. So if people want to say that it's polarizing to me, I, I feel like he has done an immense amount of good for wrestling fans because I feel like it really opened up the barriers to maybe some of these individuals that, 
didn't that wanted to tell their stories, but there's so much there. And I feel like Conrad has, he's unlocked that key. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's been able to make in your house 23 interesting. And it wasn't interesting when it aired 30 years ago. You don't know. It's, it's a pretty amazing talent. Yeah. You know, so, um, <laughs> and then there's a, there's a, the George Stragos award is going to go into somebody that did MMA. So we have Sarah McMahon, uh, she was a pioneer in UFC. She had an amateur wrestling career. She was a first uh, American to medal in wrestling in the Olympics. And then uh, she's – so she'll be the MMA recipient. And I think – gosh, I'd hate it if – oh, and then we're doing uh, a Jack Briscoe Spotlight Award. That was kind of – my my idea was, full disclosure, was to call it the Briscoe Brothers Award. And Jerry's like – vetoed that several times so it's the jack briscoe spotlight award and that's going to go to Les thatcher oh, I, um, love it. I love it yeah and that's a new and, and that's a new award and it's kind of just I, I wanted an award that was like hey jerry pick somebody and he really hasn't he's still kind of like hey who do we think but it's just i do like the idea of it kind of being in somebody's likeness like so whatever you know where the criteria is loose but it's kind of hey this is somebody that encapsulates, you know, the, what the Briscoe stood for. And then uh, we're doing a training award. Um, I, 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 Boris Malenko is is getting the first recipient. We'd like to name it. Um, we'd like, full disclosure, we'd like to name it. I don't know how much I'm stammering. I'd like to name it after a certain trainer from Minnesota years gone by, but I'm in – talks with his son to make that happen <laughs> no i don't know if that hint falls on falls on uh yeah so make work your magic <laughs> yeah. yeah well <laughs> there's some tricks that you know even houdini can't pull off <laughs> yeah, so right now we uh, are calling it to train our award and maybe we'll down the road add a, add a name to that so uh we hope um and that's going to be Boris Malenko and, and Joe uh, Malenko will be there on hand. I don't know if Dean we've reached out to him too, but um, so yeah, so that it'll be a that's the class great this year. Weekend. That is just yeah, a great, great weekend. And then and then the imp sorry the Impact Award is going to Rock Riddle, a true character and somebody that's been uh, he's <laughs> I I the first time I met Rock Riddle about a minute in he goes well. So when I get inducted, this is probably seven years ago, is when I get inducted, <laughs> what should I wear? You know, he's like, I know, it's probably, we hadn't talked a minute, and he's asking me about that. So seven years later, I'll have to tell him to wear a suit. I don't know. So. Troy, you might want to go down to the uh, to the venue right now, because I'm sure Rock is already delivering his acceptance speech. <laughs> you know, you certainly have uh, started it. He started it already, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so well, what about some of the other events, Troy? Because I know one thing I like, too, is it's, it's like it's constantly one thing after another after another. Can it, what can fans expect, like, from the minute that they get in all the way through the, the banquet? Um, you know, like, so on Thursday night, people come in and get registered. We do kind of a thing at the museum. We have uh, free pizza and beer and uh, snacks, and we have a little bit of a program, and it's just – Kind of, hey, welcome to the weekend. We start our, uh, we'll do, I think, a raffle, and then we have a, the silent auction. Um, last year, you know, I, this wasn't even meant to be advertised with this. You know, last year, we had this thing. I mean, oh, maybe my, uh, wow, I'm sure. going to give you the full. Oh, yeah. To, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I see it. We see it. Oh, that was, uh, that, I, that cost me way more money than my wife wanted me to spend on it. But, um, the uh, we have a silent auction, and then we do trivia at the bar. It's a uh, it's a fun, fun time. We have just Jake from he does a bar trivia. He comes over, and then Friday, really the event we had last week, which kind of is why we know each other now, Chris, is the is the podcast collective, mm -hmm. which, and I think this year will be a lot bigger and a lot more robust, and kind of have a little more ideas, you know, have a little more form to it. Um, that's kind of something I've been working on is to try to get that a little more dialed in. And cause that was something that was really cool in both having presenters and fans there. Um, yeah. 
and then we'll do a roundtable discussion. Uh, Colt Cabana is going to do a live version of the Art of Wrestling in the afternoon. We'd love it if anybody else wants to do a live version of their podcast. <clears throat> <clears throat> And then Friday night. You, you, go, you want to see? You want to see? You want to say something, Mick? No, no, I uh, no. Uh-uh. <laughs> well, you guys let me know. We we can figure it out. Because if you, we'd love to. Yeah, if you guys want to do a live podcast on, we're not we're not doing anything else that weekend, uh, Troy. You know if. Uh, Utilize us as uh, as you see fit. The, okay. You know, yeah. Let's, yeah. You know? No, that'd be fun because that's it. Like you said, it's just all these little events going on and these kind of pop up. I mean, I've, I've seen Baron just sit in the library years ago and then all of a sudden there's like a roundtable discussion going on. So I'd tell people, hey, yeah. Baron's in the library taking questions. You know, it wasn't <laughs> anything I did, but it wasn't, uh, it gets on the program real quickly when he's doing that. So, um, Friday, we have the Impact Wrestling show. Then we do a, a party afterwards at Doey Joey's, uh, their reoccurring theme uh, throughout the weekend. <laughs> and then uh, Saturday is kind of all day at the museum. There's a autograph signing. There's We do a Q&A. We do a roundtable discussion. We do kind of different, like last year, we went down to the basement and gave tours of that, um, some of the archives uh there's vendors you know like chris owens will be bringing his andre the giant exhibit and there's all kinds of authors and that stuff. is great that that is so great and chris is one of those guys that i've gotten to know a little bit more known a little bit more great grammar uh he's one of those guys that i've gotten to know a little bit more and you just see see the genuine passion that these guys have and it's it's they're just genuine people that want to show respect and learn and, and honor it. I just, I think that's so, I think that's so cool. Like yeah. when, you know, cause you mentioned Chris and I mean, his, his whole thing, his whole gimmick is just the, the Andre, the giant and just bringing to light everything about Andre. And to me, it's like, I just, I find that so fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. We have a guy that did that with Maurice to I need to reach out to him. Oh, he, wow. he brought, he brought a, a, you know, each year brought some, uh, French angel, you know, things and brought the, the bus down and stuff. And we have one at the museum too, but he, you know, yeah, that stuff's really cool. So, and then Saturday we have the awards banquet and Saturday night, we usually, it's kind of free form party, but <laughs> um, hey, hey, there's Mick, a lot of that. Yeah. Mick, remember last year during trivia that I got yelled at because I was texting my wife? You know you did. Uh, uh, Great ship. Well, oh yeah, my she, god. We we, uh, we had answered uh, our our team had answered several questions correctly, and uh, Chris apparently he was texting his wife, wanted to see how things were going at home, and several people in the in the room there, one one gal in particular, uh, thought no, it was that just one, it was, was one, it was one table. It was just really like one or two people at that table. Yeah. Yeah, they accused Chris of, of, of having the answers fed to him, um, which, you know, that's neither she here she nor there. Chris. But, you know, yeah. the other thing is, you know, we finished, uh, our team finished second, I believe. Yeah, in, we were number two in a lot of ways. Two. And uh, I, I don't <laughs> recall what question it was. Oh, I, I think it was how many people, how many different people have won the hardcore title or the 24-7. It was the 24-7 championship in the WWE. Well, to be honest with you, first of all, we don't give a shit. Right. Secondly, <laughs> you know, I, how the hell will throw out a number there? 38, 117. And that was really, that was that took us out of first place. So all these people that are getting gifts and handbags and everything else, and, and we're sitting there, and Chris is being accused of getting the answers fed to him. We get the trivia Stolen from us, we're coming back for vengeance this year, Troy. I'm telling you, you. Have to cancel trivia. I didn't realize there was this no, 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 no. Let it play out. <laughs> let, let it play out. It was, it was, it was that rematch. It was well, funny. It was it was so funny that she was getting so lot bent out of shape. I'm like, I'm texting my wife about my daughter. I'm being a good dad. I'm being a good dad. Uh, uh, some it was, people it was take just it funny. serious. 
They take know. that trivia gimmick. <laughs> it, it, Troy, it's it's such a wonderful weekend. It's Seriously, so much fun. I mean, I just all of us can't right. encourage people enough. If you want a laid back, you know, just a tremendous a learning experience. Fan friendly, you can schmooze with the wrestlers. I mean, don't bug them, don't follow up to their you know hotel room or anything. But but they're so eager to just be instead of you know being a commodity. And I think that is what's that's great true. about this whole event. That was perfectly yeah, that was great. Yeah, that's yep, yeah, I agree. Um, I appreciate you saying that. I just yeah, I know it's a, it means a lot to me. It's something I'm passionate about. I just I love to see it grow each year. I love to see people like, you know, you come down, Chris, like for the first time and, and it, it affects you and, and you want to come back and return. Yeah. I, yeah, that's what it's all about for me. And um, I will say one thing too is, hey, I get into town usually Tuesday. I park my car at the parking ramp. I honestly don't move my car again until I leave Sunday. I mean, that's something for visitors. It's not – you know, the hotel's connected to the venue where the show and the banquet is, and that's two blocks from the museum. It's all right there. Yeah. So it's just, again, you're just running into people all the time, walking to and from, and, you know, just, yeah, it's just a neat, neat atmosphere. If you're not, you're seeing other wrestling fans, you know, you're just, it's pretty submersive into that pro wrestling love. Troy, I, I remember the words of Sir Oliver Humperdinck, and this will explain it very well for fans. When, when Red uh, Sir Oliver went down there, he kind of surveyed the area where everything was going to be taking place. And he said, this is great. I've got the hotel. I've got the venue. I've got a pizza place and a hospital all within a short <laughs> radius here. He said, I'm all set. <laughs> so, uh, and and it is that way. And and again, Impact Wrestling. I don't want to gloss over that. That is such a tight, great production with some of the great athletes. I know Chris. Last year, you saw Mike Bennett, uh, one yeah. of your favorites. You do a hell I of. Love, I love Mike Bennett. I I he love his message. Yeah, what he stands for, and. I mean, Mick, you and I were sitting there like just like breaking down the matches and just watching. And it was I mean, I you can see there are a lot of really talented kids, a lot of talented performers that work for impact. I mean, I I thought it was a great show. I thought yeah, it was great. You. No, thank you. In, it, in this show, like this show, I get so much, you know, this is the ultimate, you know, it's kind of our WrestleMania. So everybody's always like, hey, great job, great job, good job. And I'm like, this is the easiest show. And it's Mick, you know, it's put together wrestling shows. You, you have the talent, and then you have this influx of talent you're bringing in. So you can kind of just put them in a bag and pull out names, and the show would be pretty good. <laughs> but but I, I'll take all the credit. I, I get heaped on me. But it's uh, – Hey, we're going to really, put you over, Troy. We're going to put yeah, you over. I appreciate we're gonna put that. But, you know, you put Mike Bennett in the ring with anybody on our roster, and it's going to be pretty good. That guy is great. But him and him and Bryce Jordan had a great match last year, and yeah, and Mike Mike is great. He, he's uh, we brought him in one time for a training thing. He's, he cares about it. He's he's very productive in his in his critiques and and not trying to just you know smooth somebody, but also not trying to put out their dream. He's a, he's a, he's a good dude. And I feel like yeah. that's a good influence to have somebody who's got the character of Mike Bennett to come in and, you know, work with, you know, some of your, some of your athletes, because yeah. he, there's nothing negative that I can think about, about Mike Bennett. Right. No, I mean, he's, he was great. And then, yeah, if we bring him in again, last year, his wife was in the back the whole time. Trish Stratus goes, oh, is that Maria? And she, I'm like, yeah. So she went over and said hi. I said, what the hell are you doing in Waterloo? <laughs> and they didn't even know each other around. That was pretty neat. But, yeah, uh, no, it was, uh, it was fun. How do people get tickets? We we, we want to we wanna get this place. Uh, Let's do it. Uh, really, I mean, you can go. I, I, I love the scrolling bar here. I um, appreciate that. Really, yeah, the nwhof.org. Um, you got to go to Waterloo up at the top and, and go to get tickets. Otherwise you can just on Facebook try, if you just search George Tragos, the rest of the Facebook page comes up and then there's posters and 
QR codes and, and links to get you to some tickets. And, and really for the fan fest and show, I mean, the tickets are $20 to, or $30 for ringside in advance. So, I mean, it's really pretty cheap. And then the all access passes are $130 and that's, you know, meal and beer on Thursday, meal on Saturday, and then wrestling show and everything else that goes You're not going to find a better value. As a no, wrestling fan, no. you're not going to find a better value than that. And I've been to Manias. I've been to WrestleCons. I've been to all sorts of different things. As a fan, you can't get any better than – you're. you want to get the most for your money, you're not going to get any more than you get when you go to, to Waterloo. Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate you saying we try. I mean, yeah, and that's just it. Hey, when I say it doesn't mean anything, because of course I'm I'm a CD wrestling promoter. I'm I'm Carney and all these bad things. <laughs> you know, I do love to hear it from other people that are like, yeah, hey, I did experience this. Keys Arnie, Keys Arnie, Bizu, Bizu. Troy, we're all looking forward to seeing you, buddy. It, it's going to be great to reunite and see everybody that's down there. And, of course, Joyce and Woody coming in. And, oh, yeah. and I'll see my buddy James Jeffries. And uh, it, it's just such a great, great weekend. And we're really looking forward to it. Very much so. Thank you. I appreciate being on. This has been great. And, um, yeah, just look forward to seeing everybody in July. Can't wait. We'll see you then.